Good morning. A couple of years ago, when I was in a far-off land teaching some ministers about uh, the Day of Atonement from Leviticus 16, uh, one of my hosts began to realize that they really didn't understand what I was saying. They weren't getting it. And so he asked the crowd that was assembled whether uh, they had a couple of goats nearby, and they brought in goats, and we actually modeled out for the people exactly what happened on the Day of Atonement. And after that, he said, did everybody get it? And then all the hands went up, and I wish I could do that for you here right now. So I hope you'll be able to follow what happens here in Leviticus 16. It's, it's a very important passage that tells us about one of the key festivals in the calendar of the Jews. So this came from the Lord through Aaron. Uh, Moses uh, gave this message. It was after the death of the two sons of Aaron, which was quite a traumatic event. We talked about that before. And then Moses uh, said this message of the Lord to Aaron, tell Aaron your brother not to come at any time into the holy place inside the veil before the mercy seat that is on the ark so that he may not die. In other words, not just any old time, but there would be a special time. And at the end of the chapter, the date of that time is given, and it's in the seventh month on the tenth day of that month. It says, you shall afflict yourself. So this would be a time for repentance and a time of mourning before the Lord regarding sin. And on that day, it says, you shall um, atone, you shall make atonement um, for your cleansing and you shall be clean before the Lord from all your sins. So it, it was called the Sabbath of Solemn Rest, and this was part of, uh, of the special arrangement of the calendar of Israel. So what, what happened with the, this? First of all, Aaron needed to take a bull from the herd and make atonement for himself in terms of his own sin. And then comes the the ritual that has to do with the two goats. And it says that um, he shall take two goats and set them before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of the meeting, and Aaron shall cast lots over the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for Azazel. We don't know exactly what that means, but that's the one that's going to go off into the wilderness. The one that's for the Lord uh, will be used as a sin offering, and the other one will be presented alive. So I hope you are able to get this picture that we have these two goats. One is going to die. One is going to live and go off uh, out of the camp. And all of this is symbolizing what's necessary in order for the horrible effects of sin to be taken care of. First of all, there needs to be a death. There needs to be a death. There needs to be a blood atonement that takes place. That's the first goat. That's for the Lord. But then also the one who sins deserves to be cut off from the people of the Lord. And that's a, the second goat will take that place. And you see both of these things uh, that are part of the ritual of the Day of Atonement find their fulfillment in Jesus who dies for our sins. So there's the cross, but also the other thing about the cross is that it is a symbol of being cut off from the people of God. So there's a sense in which both of these things come together in the Day of Atonement. So it says, Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the iniquities of the people of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, and he shall put them on the head of the goat and send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a man who is in readiness, the goat shall bear all their iniquities on itself to a remote area, and he shall let the, go the goat go free in the wilderness. So this, every year, would be something that the high priest would do, first with the bull for his own sin offering, but then doing this fairly complex ritual regarding the two goats. And now what do we have? Well, we have something far superior to this, to all the, the symbolic ceremonies of the past. We have something that actually is so effectual 
that it will not be done every year. Why? Because the cross of Christ will actually work in atoning for our sins and taking away our guilt. And so once for all time, we have this great achievement of true atonement. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the work of your Son, Jesus Christ. And he has made peace with you for us. And we have now the, the covering that comes from all his perfect righteousness. And our guilt has been taken away and our shame. And we're kept in the covenant community and we are forgiven. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and thank the Lord for this great atonement.